Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. The Stormtrant, Daybreak, Nova Warp and Winter's Wrath have been recently buffed to get more super energy and do more damage while out in the field. And while these may not be the best supers to use in endgame, it's got me excited to actually try them out in dungeons, raids and GMs now. Which is why today I'm going to show you this Stormbracer slash Bad Juju combo that has started to pick up traction in the community. We have covered this build before, but never like this. If you want a under 30 second super and near 100 plus super damage, then this build is literally what you want right now. It's quite shocking, honestly. No pun intended. So starting with the general aim and the Zotic of the build, our aim is to showcase the newly buffed up Storm Trans Super and how its effects when paired with an over the top Zotic can make even the worst super for endgame amazing to use. For this, we will be using Storm Trans Brace and Bad Juju. A start with our exotic armor, Storm Dancer's Brace, with its exotic effect, Ascending Altitude, it states, Each target you defeat with Storm Trance increases the damage you deal with it, and refunds super energy when Storm Trance ends. Uh, this exotic has been around for quite a while, but has always been stepped on because of how limited our super is. While it does provide a 10% damage increase per enemy, up to 10 stacks, our Arc Super isn't that powerful enough to really warrant its use in endgame. However, with the recent update, our super is now pulling off around 10,300 per tick when at max stacks and using this against a champion. Now, depending on how fast you can reach 10 stacks, that amount of damage against miners the ultras is kind of an overkill. While champions and mini bosses, you'll be looking at one third to two thirds of their health depending on if you stun them first. As we can also get 50% super energy back from netting kills, I would say this is a pretty sweet exotic to use as of now. Our second exotic is Bad Juju, with its exotic effect, String of Curses, which states Kills refill the magazine, increase damage for a short duration, grant super energy based on the strength of String of Curses, a fires for auto. Bad Juju paired with Storm Dancer's Brace is a no-brainer with how much super energy we can garner in seconds. With the 50% super energy from our exotic armor and the additional super energy gotten from kills we make, Applying Bad Juju will simply speed up the process for the faster super regeneration by mere seconds, and this alone will allow the build to be one of the best ad claim supers to use in game. Everything about the pairing works out really well for the build, and since Juju did get an extensive rework and buff to make it feel more impactful on the field, you really don't need to invest too much into the weapon at all. In fact, this is as exotic as exotic can be. For the aspects and fragments we then have the following. A feed of Void where getting an ability kill will grant you Devour. Helion, where using your class ability will summon a solo mortar that will scorch and ignite targets. A Fast of Grace where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super will grant you bonus transcendence energy for you and your team. A Fast of Hope where having an element above will regenerate class ability over time. A Fast of Dominance where your Void grenades weaken targets, where your Arc grenades jolts them. A fast of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy, rapidly defeating targets with dark damage grants grenade energy, and a fast of awakening where defeating targets with light, dark, or super damage will grant you elemental pickup matching your damage type. As the build focuses on getting your super up and running within or under 30 seconds, the rest of the kit should either support it further or provide secondary effects. If we follow the support pathway, then you can see why using Fast Set of Grace, Dominance and Awakening is a good choice to start with. Grace will provide increased light and dark transcendence energy towards the build from using Bad Juju constantly. Our transcendent state providing us a damage boost and increasing ability regen will go a long way to provide a constantly shifting damage build that is easily maintained. Now adding on Dominance for applying Jolts is of course recommended for the amplified effect we can get which pairs well for faster weapon reload and also using it with Trace Evidence and Awakening Fragment. Awakening lastly is going to allow us to generate tons of Ionic Traces as we see fit, which works out really well if we have a low cooldown stat or have an ability that has a long cooldown to it, which luckily we don't. Our leftovers we then have Balance which is always recommended, and Hope which we can swap out depending if we don't use Helion a lot. If you don't intend to use it as often as I do, then having the Facet of Dawn for the extra damage buff, or Solitude for the weakened effect, or the alternatives I would have also chosen instead. 
For the modern stats, we have both resilience marked with the highest priority for the build. A discipline is also important at tier 9, but we do have the Vower and Ionic Tracers to help for this area. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. We have added the Harmonic Resistance mod to help with damage reduction against incoming attacks. This should be fine as this will be further supported by Devour for faster health regeneration upon getting kills and simply that should be it. Discipline, we have ours at tier 9 for a 1 minute 9 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. As I am unable to reach tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown, we have to make do with the following. Now, this isn't bad as having tier 10 is always recommended but not really that much need to worry about as long as you have the Devour on hand like we do. With this aspect and Iron Tracers being produced, you can feasibly be at tier 6 with a build and still do relatively fine. Now if you're a new player, this should be something to note since Devour is easy to proc and maintain, so you can get away with a few things every now and then. With grenade cooldowns covered, you can then invest into other areas like shown. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, momentum transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff, and distribution times 1 for a 3% all ability buff will cover the melee part of the build. Additional mods we then have the following. Connect Siphon for creating orbs of power via kinetic weapons. Heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon. Charged up for a plus one armor charge. Recuperation, where collecting orbs of power will grant you a bit of health back. Kinetic weapon surge for a 10% kinetic weapon buff. And powerful attraction, for automatically collecting orbs of power when using your class ability. So as we have covered our exotic priming weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary is the VS Velocity Baton with Demolitionist and High Ground. Now, while High Ground has been nerfed as of recently, it's still a good damage perk worth relying on. We will be making use of the high elevation being performed to activate High Ground's effect, which at the same time will also allow us to trigger Demolitionist's perk much faster as well for even more R grenades. You don't need to have this grenade launcher, as the build can make do with whatever you have in mind. So having a wild style grenade launcher from Zavala with reconstruction or Vulpal, etc. and then applying the concussive reload mod is probably a play I would have also gone with if I didn't have the following. Heavy, we didn't have the bittersweet with loose change and jolting feedback. This weapon combo works out really well for an arc build we have for show, as loose change will get enhanced once jolting feedback kicks in. Since we will be amplified quite constantly, these effects will become paramount when dealing with mini bosses to bosses of all times. I recommend you follow the setup if you can, as using this with trace evidence and faster awakening will allow us to generate constant arc iron traces without the need of switching fully arc subclass. So many of you here who are familiar with this channel will have seen me cover the Storm Dancer Brace Azotic many, many times in the past. A lot of the time when the build was being shown, it was to remind players that there are more Zotics in the game that are worth investing in, even if they don't provide a mighty punch compared to some. And while Storm Dancer isn't as OP one would imagine, the newly added update allows the Zotic to at least shine in its given environment when given the chance. Storm Trance getting a 30% to 55% damage buff against champions is a very large increase compared to its base form from beforehand. Now applying this to Storm Dancer Azotic Effect which provides a 10% super damage increase per enemy killed and this will allow you to stomp around champions as long as they are stunned. The stunned is important here as compared to Nova Bomb which can do a significant amount of damage against champions who aren't stunned, Storm Trance can't do the same unless you max out your damage output more which is still 50-50. But what really makes this worth using is how fast you get your super back and I mean really fast. Not only do we get a damage buff, but we also get a super regen buff by times 3. Now Storm Dancers can get 50% super energy back depending on how many enemies you kill. While combining this with bad juju and this string of curses effects means you can get your super back in under 30 seconds. This is crazy as the gameplay show shows just how real this is. A super back to back with little effort? Yes please. This along with prismatic abilities debuff and grenade launcher and wicked fit to boot, it should have persuaded you by now to give this build a try. I know that storm trance might not be that amazing still to even use even with the buff alone, but the super is much more better when you combine it into a set that actually forces you to use it more and more often. 
is not a game changer, but it does give you an option to actually try it out without fail. I, like always, recommend you give it a try before chucking it in the bin. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.